The current Romanian arms are the lesser version of the Romanian kingdom's arms. The blue shield has a central element. It shows a crowned golden eagle holding a cross in its beak. I'd also like to go over the five components that make up the shield on the eagle's chest. Romania as a nation was created to unite the Romanian-speaking people across the Carpathian Mountains. The main eagle comes from the arms of the Basarab dynasty, which is the same family that gave us the famous Vlad the Impaler. The Basarab house was formed in 1310 when Basarab I rebelled against Charles I of Hungary. He unified all the Romanian tribes and became Wallachia's first ruler. The eagle holds in its talons a mace and a scepter. Together, they were symbols of Romania's monarchy and its power. Individually, however, the sword is supposed to symbolize Moldavia's ruler, Stephen the Great, whereas the scepter is a reminder of Michael the Brave, the first unifier of Romanian countries. The crown on the eagle's head is the famous steel crown of Romania. King Carol I of the Romanians ordered it to be forged from the steel of a cannon captured by the Romanian army from the Ottomans, which was during the War of Independence. The king chose steel and not gold to symbolize the bravery of the Romanian soldiers. Moving to the inner shield and to understand its components, I'll show various historical maps of old principalities and kingdoms that made up Romania. The first two are what some people call the Danubian principalities, Wallachia and Moldavia. They emerged in the 14th century and alongside Transylvania, they became the basis for the Kingdom of Romania. So in the first section, we see Wallachia's coat of arms, an eagle holding in its beak a golden orthodox cross, accompanied by a golden sun and a golden new moon. These elements can be seen and traced back all the way to the medieval coins from Wallachia. Next we have Moldavia's traditional coat of arms. It shows an ancient oryx's head with a star between its horns. Oryxes are basically extinct wild ancestors of modern cattle. The oryx's head is flanked to the right by the sun and to the left by a new moon as well. It's not exactly known when and under what circumstances did this representation appear as a symbol of the country. But scholars consider that the emblem existed before the foundation of an independent Moldavian feudal state by Bogdan I in 1359. The oldest surviving representations of it are seals and coins from the late 14th century. Moving down, we find Transylvania's coat of arms. The eagle stands for Transylvania proper, and the sun and crescent are old symbols from the region. The seven towers, however, have a more complicated origin story. The oldest and coolest one comes from the 14th century Book of Knowledge of All Kingdoms, which calls Transylvania Septum Castra, which is Latin for seven fortresses. Other historians say that the Roman province of Dacia used the castle as their symbol. And after that, and upon creating the Grand Principality of Transylvania in 1765, Marie Antoinette's mother, Empress Maria Theresa, finally standardized the coat of arms of Transylvania, introducing the red stripe in the middle. Also represented are the lands adjacent to the Black Sea. The historical province of Dobroja's coat of arms has two dolphins, and that's likely a symbol for the dolphins in the Black Sea. The fifth element on the shield is that of Oltenia and the Banat. Situated between the Danube, the Southern Carpathians, and the Olt River, Oltenia's historical symbol was the lion, and when it merged with the Banat in 1918, they adopted Trajan's bridge under the lion. This bridge was a Roman segmental arch bridge, the first one to be built over the lower Danube by order of Emperor Trajan. Though it was only functional for 165 years, it is often considered to be the longest arch bridge in both total and span length for more than a thousand years. Historically speaking though, the only time those symbols were absent was after the communists forced the king to abdicate. They changed both the flag and the coat of arms, and the coat of arms became more faithful to the communist symbolism, and it lasted from 1948 to 1992. When the coat of arms was brought back in 1992, the eagle did not have a crown, and it wasn't until 2016 when we saw the steel crown make a comeback. This was to celebrate Romania's liberation and remind the people of the victory over the Turkish invaders. If you're looking to watch a similar video, you can check out this one or browse the playlist for more coats of arms. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment and I will see you next time on Council of Knowledge.